Hello everyone and welcome to Medford Anywhere Learning TV. We're glad you're tuned in. We want to give a shout out to our friends at Southern Oregon PBS, KTVL, KDRV, and the Dove Network. Thank you for hosting us on your station. In the Medford School District, we have one shared vision and that we believe that all are learning and learning is for all. And what better place to do that than right here on Medford Anywhere Learning TV. Hi friends, my name is Mrs. Schmidt and I teach at Lone Pine Elementary, first and second grades. I'm here today, I brought my daughter Mackenzie with me. She's gonna help me read two stories to you. The first story is called The Cat, The Dog, Little Red, The Exploding Eggs, The Wolf, and Grandma. Now, when you were hearing the title, it's a very long title, in fact, the dog here is saying, it all sounds a bit complicated to me. You probably heard and thought of Little Red, the Wolf, and Grandma, and it probably reminded you of the fairy tale Little Red Riding Hood. You are right. In this story, you're going to hear references to that fairy tale. The main characters are the cat and the dog, and today, Mackenzie's going to be the cat, and I'm going to be the dog. Are you still thinking about those exploding eggs? Sounds pretty silly. We're not going to give it away. Listen for the exploding eggs in this story. Let's read. The cat, the dog, little red, the exploding eggs, the wolf, and grandma by Diane and Christian Fox. What's this page for? It's called the end paper, but it comes at the beginning. Here's our title page. The cat the dog, Little Red, the exploding eggs, the wolf, and grandma. Little Red Riding Hood. There once was a sweet little girl who lived with her father and mother in a pretty little cottage at the edge of the village. She always wore a red cape with a hood, which suited her so well that everybody called her Little Red Riding Hood. Hey, what's this? It's a story about a little girl who always wears a red cape with a hood. Cool! I love stories about superheroes. What's her special power? She doesn't have any special powers. It's not that kind of story. So, what happens? Well, one morning, her mother asked Little Red Riding Hood to take a basket of eggs, butter, cake, and sweets to her grandmother. Oh, so kindness is her special power. Does she hypnotize bad guys into being nice? And what kind of candy? Look, do you want to hear this story or not? So, where was I? Little Red Riding Hood was on her way to Grandma's house when she met a wolf. A wolf? Excellent! They're always the bad guys in stories like this. I bet she zaps him with her kindness ray. She does not have a kindness ray. She has a basket of eggs and butter and cakes and sweets. How does she fight crime then? Does she have a cool kind of flying gadget basket? Are they exploding eggs? There's no kindness ray, no flying basket, and no exploding eggs. She's just a sweet little girl with terrible fashion sense on her way to see her grandmother. Okay, okay. So let's hear the rest of the story. Well, the wolf asked Little Red Riding Hood where she was going, and she said Grandma's house. So the wolf said goodbye and secretly headed to Grandma's house. Hang on. Why doesn't the wolf man try to eat Hood Girl then and there? You're doing this on purpose, aren't you? How should I know why he didn't eat her? Hmm, I wonder why the wolf prefers old ladies. Anyway, the wolf arrived at Grandma's cottage and saw the old lady lying in bed. She jumped up when she saw the wolf and locked herself in the closet. I think the wolf needs to think bigger if he's going to be a supervillain. Maybe he could rob a bank on the way to Grandma's house. Are you listening at all? Yes. Special powers, no. Supervillain, no. Exploding eggs, no. Okay, so Grandma leaped out, up out of bed and locked herself in the closet to be safe. Then the wolf put on some of Grandma's clothes and climbed into the bed, waiting for Little Red Riding Hood to arrive. Hang on. So now you're saying he does want to eat her? Yes. Anyway, this is my favorite part. She arrived and said, what big eyes you have, Grandma. And the wolf replied, all the better to see you with. She's not very bright, is she? I mean, if there were a wolf dress dressed up as my grandma, I might have noticed right away. And Little Red Riding Hood said, what a big nose you have, Grandma. 
And the wolf replied, All the better to smell you with, my dear. Let me see that book. And she said, What big teeth you have, Grandma. And the wolf said, All the better to eat you up. Yikes! But just at the last moment, Little Red Riding Hood's father arrived and chopped off the wolf's head with an axe. Oh. And they all lived happily ever after. I'm not sure that the wolf was very happy in the end. So let's see if I have this right. The Red Hood is on her way to help an old lady when she meets the wolf man. He has an evil plan. He likes to dress up in girls' clothes and eat people. He and Red have a big battle, and Red's father puts an end to Wolfie. Well, sort of. It's not a very nice story, is it? Are you absolutely sure this is a children's book? That's it. I'm leaving. Find your own book to read. Just one last question. What? Is Grandma still in the closet? Bonk. Ouch! So, do these end papers always come at the beginning? Yes, unless they're at the end. And that's the end of our story. But if you look on the back cover, there's a closet shaking and somebody saying, hello, hello, like the grandma's still stuck inside the closet. That was a good story. Before we read our next story, I want to talk a little bit about character traits. Character traits, friends, are what describes a character or a person, or in this case, some animals. Character traits can be on the outside, like what a person looks like, but they can also be on the inside, the qualities or behaviors that a person has. And an author shows you the character traits with their words and what the actions in the story, what the characters do, and the illustrators can show you character traits by their pictures. We can't really see a lot about the outside character traits of our cat and dog. They were just done in black and white. But we can think about their inside character traits. For the cat, you know, he was very patient with the dog. He kept interrupting and asking him questions, and the cat stayed with him till the end of the story, answering his questions. The dog was very curious, so his character trait was curious as he was asking all of those questions, and the cat patiently answered them. Now, the cat's also pretty intelligent, so that's another character trait I'm going to write down. She was pretty smart to be able to answer all of his questions and help him understand the story. But you know what I was thinking, that dog, he was kind of rude. Character traits can be good and bad, and you can have lots of different character traits. So while the dog was curious, he was also kind of rude because he kept interrupting the cat's story. The cat at the very end, because your friends, your character traits can also change. The cat at the end of this story was annoyed, was annoyed with the dog. He'd asked one too many questions, and we can tell that the cat was annoyed because he threw the book at the dog. Now, you know the dog, I'm going to give him another positive character trait. He was pretty imaginative. That means he had a good imagination, you know, when he was thinking up things like the kindness ray or the flying gadget basket or the exploding eggs. He had a really good imagination. So that's another character trait that the dog had. Our next story has some characters, three wolves and a pig. And as we're listening to this story, I want you to be thinking about the character traits in these characters. Our second story is the three little wolves and the big bad pig. Now this is a fractured fairy tale from the fairy tale, The Three Little Pigs and the Big Bad Wolf. The author, Eugene Trivizas, and the illustrator, Helen Oxenbury, have taken a story and switched the characters around. So let's read. The Three Little Wolves and the Big Bad Pig by Eugene Trivizas, illustrated by Helen Oxenbury. Once upon a time, there were three cuddly little wolves with soft fur and fluffy tails who lived with their mother. The first was black, the second was gray, and the third was white. I'm going to stop right there, friends. Right here, the author has already told us some outside character traits. We know that the wolves are little, cuddly, they have soft fur and fluffy tails, and we know what color they are, black and gray and white. One day, the mother called the three little wolves around her and said, My children, it is time for you to go out into the world. Go and build a house for yourselves, but beware of the big, bad pig. 
Again, the author has told us two character traits already in the text for the pig, big and bad. Don't worry, mother. We will watch out for him, said the three little wolves, and they set off. Soon they met a kangaroo who was pushing a wheelbarrow full of red and yellow bricks. Please, will you give us some of your bricks? asked the three little wolves. Certainly, said the kangaroo, and she gave them lots of red and yellow bricks. So the three little wolves built themselves a house of bricks. Funny friends, I'm thinking about the story of the three little pigs, and at the end of that story they built the house of bricks. But the author in this story is switching to the beginning. The bricks are being built. The brick house is being built at the beginning. I wonder what will come next. Let's keep reading. The very next day, the big bad pig came prowling down the road and saw the house of bricks that the little wolves had built. The three little wolves were playing croquet in the garden. When they saw the big bad pig coming, they ran inside the house and locked the door. Friends, if you don't know what this word croquet means, the illustrator is giving you a clue. You can see this game played with mallets and balls and hoops. That's the game of croquet. The pig knocked on the door and grunted, Little wolves, little wolves, let me come in. No, 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 said the three little wolves. By the hair on our chinny chin chins, we will not let you in. Not for all the tea leaves in our china teapot. I'm going to stop there, friends. I want to show you a china teapot. So when I first read this story, I was a little bit confused. I'd never heard that version before. Not for all the tea leaves in our china teapot. So this is what a china teapot looks like. It's made, called china because of what it's made out of, similar to what your plates or bowls might be made, of, made out of at your house. And the tea leaves, when you make a pot of tea, you fill it with hot water and you use tea leaves because leaves are made out of special, tea is made out of special kinds of leaves. And you put the leaves into a special container in your teapot and they soak in the water to make a big pot of tea. So when the wolf said, not for all the tea leaves in our china teapot, that must mean something that's very important to them because they weren't willing to give that up. Let's get back to the story. So the wolf said, we will not let you in, not for all the tea leaves in our china teapot. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down. So he huffed and he puffed and he puffed and he huffed but the house didn't fall down. But the pig wasn't called big and bad for nothing. He went and fetched his sledgehammer and he knocked the house down. The three little wolves only just managed to escape before the bricks crumbled and they were very frightened indeed. Do you see? They grabbed their china teapot right there. It's a little hard to see, but it's there in the wolf's hand. Keep an eye out for that teapot throughout this story. We just have to build a stronger house, they said. Just then, they saw a beaver who was mixing concrete in a concrete mixer. Please, will you give us some of your concrete? Asked the three little wolves. Certainly, said the beaver. And he gave them buckets and buckets full of messy, slurry concrete. So the three little wolves built themselves a house of concrete. This word slurry is an interesting word. You might not know what it means. But if you've ever seen wet concrete, concrete is what they use to make sidewalks out of. If you've ever seen it when they're pouring it, it's still, it's kind of like a rocky slurpy. It's not solid, but it's not like water, liquid like water. It's kind of chunky. So slurry is a, sort of like a wet, um, rocky mixture. No sooner had they finished than the big bad pig came prowling down the road and saw the house of concrete that the little wolves had built. They were playing battle door and shuttlecock in the garden, and when they saw the big bad pig coming, they ran inside their house and shut the door. If you don't know what battle door and shuttlecock are, you can use the picture, the illustration, to see what that game is that they're talking about. It's similar to badminton. The pig rang the bell and said, Little frightened wolves, let me come in. No, 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 said the three little wolves. By the hair on our chinny-chin-chins, we will not let you in, 
not for all the tea leaves in our china teapot. Then I'll huff, and I'll puff, and I'll blow your house down, said the pig. So he huffed, and he puffed, and he puffed, and he huffed, but the house didn't fall down. But the pig wasn't called big and bad for nothing. He went and fetched his pneumatic drill and smashed the house down. Friends, you can use the illustration to help you figure out what a pneumatic drill is. The three little wolves managed to escape, but their chinny-chin chins were trembling and trembling and trembling. Mackenzie, what's another word for trembling? Shaking. Shaking, that's right. They were shaking in fear. They were so scared. And if you look back in the picture, do you see the teapot? There it is, right there. We shall build an even stronger house, they said, because they were very determined. That's a character trait right there. Determined means they wouldn't give up. Just then, they saw a truck coming along the road, carrying barbed wire, iron bars, armor plates, and heavy metal padlocks. Padlocks are the locks up here. And plates, friends, they aren't the plates that we eat off of. They're like big rectangular or square pieces of metal. Please, will you give us some of your barbed wire, a few iron bars and armor plates, and some heavy metal padlocks? They said to the rhinoceros who was driving the truck. Sure, said the rhinoceros, and he gave them plenty of barbed wire, iron bars, armor plates, and heavy metal padlocks. He also gave them plexiglass. That's kind of like a clear plastic that they could see through. And some reinforced steel chains because he was a generous and kind-hearted rhinoceros. There's two character traits right there, generous and kind-hearted. So the three little wolves built themselves an extremely strong house. It was the strongest, securest house one could possibly imagine. They felt absolutely safe. The next day, the big bad pig came prowling along the road as usual. The three little wolves were playing hopscotch in the garden. When they saw the big bad pig coming, they ran inside their house, bolted the door, and locked all the 37 padlocks. The pig dialed the video entrance phone and said, Little frightened wolves with the trembling chins, let me come in. No, 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 said the little wolves, by the hair on our chinny chin chins. We will not let you in, not for all the tea leaves in our china teapot. Then I'll huff, and I'll puff, and I'll blow your house down, said the pig. So he huffed, and he puffed, and he puffed, and he huffed, but the house didn't fall down. But the pig wasn't called big and bad for nothing. He brought some dynamite, laid it against the house, lit the fuse, and the house blew up. The three little wolves just managed to escape with their fluffy tails scorched. Scorched is another word for burned. And do you see what they have in their hands? They've got their treasured teapot. Something must be wrong with our building materials, they said. We have to try something different. But what? At that moment, they saw a flamingo coming along, pushing a wheelbarrow full of flowers. Please. Will you give us some flowers? asked the little wolves. With pleasure, said the flamingo, and he gave them lots of flowers. So the three little wolves built themselves a house of flowers. I'm going to describe the house of flowers, and I brought some pictures to help you picture it in your mind. So I want you to visualize what this house looked like, and I'm going to show you pictures of the flowers. It says, one wall was of marigolds. So picture in your mind a picture of marigolds covering a whole wall. One of daffodils. One wall of pink roses. And one of cherry blossoms. The ceiling was made of sunflowers. And the floor was a carpet of daisies. They had water lilies in their bathtub and buttercups in their refrigerator. It was a rather fragile house and it swayed in the wind, but it was very beautiful. Remember, the word fragile means that it's easy to break. Hmm, doesn't seem like a very safe place. 
Next day, the big bad pig came prowling down the road and saw the house of flowers that the three little wolves had built. He rang the bluebell at the door and said, Little frightened wolves with the trembling chins and the scorched tails, let me come in. No, 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 said the three little wolves. By the hair on our chinny chin chins, we will not let you in, not for all the tea leaves in our china teapot. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down, said the pig. But as he took a deep breath, ready to huff and puff, he smelled the soft scent of the flowers. It was fantastic. And because the scent was so lovely, the pig took another breath and then another. Instead of huffing and puffing, he began to sniff. He sniffed deeper and deeper until he was quite filled with the fragrant scent. His heart grew tender and he realized how horrible he had been. Right then, he decided to become a big, good pig. He started to sing and to dance the tarantella. Now, if you don't know what that word tarantella means, the author has given you a clue in the sentence. He said, he said to, he started to sing and to dance the tarantella. So dance is your clue right there that the tarantella is a type of dance. And here you can see him in the picture dancing with the tambourine. The wolves are looking a little surprised. At first, the three little wolves were a bit worried. It might be a trick. But soon they realized that the pig had truly changed. So they came running out of the house. They started playing games with him. First, they played pig pog and then piggy in the middle. And when they were all tired, they invited him into the house. You can see the house up here on the hill. Is it how you pictured it in your mind? They offered him tea and strawberries and wolfberries and asked him to stay with them as long as he wanted. The pig accepted, and they all lived happily together ever after. So let's think, friends, for a minute about what were the character traits of the wolves and the pig. Do you remember, friends, on that very first page, the author had given us some outside traits of the wolves. He talked about how they were little, that was their size, how they had soft fur, and even told us the colors. Do you remember? Gray, white, and black. And as we were listening to the story, you remember we heard that word determined. The author told us that the wolves were very determined. Determined means you don't give up. And he certainly showed that in their actions. They kept trying to build stronger and stronger houses. They were also very polite. I don't know if you noticed this as I was reading, but each time they came across another character that had a building material for them, they always started with the word please. So being polite is a character trait that I'm gonna put down for the wolves because they were always saying please to the animals that had building materials. And then they were very nice, very kind. I'm gonna add that. Remember at the very end, when they invited the pig to live with them, they played with him, they served him food, and then they invited him to live with them. So a character trait for the wolves would definitely be kind. The pig, now at the very beginning of this story, we know that he was big, he was bad, and the illustrator showed us that he was pink. Throughout the story, he was pretty mean. He kept knocking down their houses. So mean is another character trait. But just like how the cat changed in the first story that we read, the pig's character trait changed by the end of our story. He went from being a big, bad, mean pig to a big, good pig. I'm going to add that to the very end. So sometimes in our stories, the character's traits can change from the beginning to the end. Thank you for reading with us today, friends. I encourage you when you're reading your stories at home to think about the characters and the traits that they have. And are any of the traits similar to your own personal character traits? Because not just characters and stories have traits, but we have traits as well. 
Have fun reading, and thank you for watching Medford, Medford Anywhere Learning TV. Thanks for tuning in to Medford Anywhere Learning TV. Medford School District is a place where all are learning, and learning is for all. So, Cadence, how was your day? How did I do this year? I have um, like that. That one's a little different three or four different elementary students here at Jackson, Jackson Elementary. And they are chronic disease kiddos. They have diabetes. So let's use one from here, shall we? Um, the benefit of having a school-based health center on site is I, I'm not always on site. So I plan their care. I plan their school day. I plan when they need their insulin. I come for that. But if they were to have an emergency, then there's the school-based health center right here on site. Hey, sweetie, I'm going to take your needle. Okay, you can go eat. For kids who have chronic disease, it's essential. The Medford School District has three school-based health centers, but they're all at the elementary level. We do have access to a mobile health clinic one afternoon a week, but when you consider that they might have gotten sick the day after the clinic, the mobile health clinic is here, they won't wait an entire week to get into that, that unit, they'll just be sick. The Law Clinica Mobile Health Center is a clinic on wheels that provides medical, dental, and behavioral health care. It sees students from Central Medford High School once a week and students from North Medford High School once a week. I had problems with my anxiety and none, my doctor wasn't really helping me with it. And when I came, they, were, um, they listened to me and they were really nice about it and they helped me get medication so cheerleading was easier for me and I could breathe and it's helped my anxiety a lot actually. Be a little quiet and try to hold your breath for a minute. I couldn't cheer without the anxiety medication they prescribed me and now um, I take, I do everything better. I breathe better. I don't get nervous before we compete. I don't feel like I'm going to get sick before something that's supposed to make you nervous. Nearly 1,000 students received care last year at the Medford School District's health centers and the mobile clinic. Imagine how many more high school students would get care with a center permanently based at their school. What we tend to find is that our students, when they get sick, um, they get sick, their family gets sick, and they're out for long periods of time. Like we live in a day and age where it's test after test after homework after homework. And so it's extremely important that you stay in school, that you stay focused, and that you're not skipping out on a day or skipping a couple classes that you might need to attend to. Because you miss one day in classes, and some classes that's like missing a week. Health issues can be a barrier to graduation. For these students, I mean, some of them, we just really understand that just getting to school took a lot. You know, they had to get up early, they had to ride a bus or two um, to get here from their neighborhood and, and where they're staying. And so, you know, oftentimes just their physical health is, no, is not the priority. I always have uh, situations where I have to go get doctors or I have to go to the dentist or I have to go get prescriptions, but I can never really get a, I, I'd always have to miss school and miss AP class and I'd always have tons of homework. But with the school-based health center, you're gone for like maybe 20, 30 minutes, you're right back into class, you're getting help, and then you get everything you need to get done without missing too much school. A high school-based health center for the Medford School District, because every student deserves to be healthy. I used to get so bad, I'd shake, I'd cry, and now I can just go on the floor and just smile. I would encourage people to just realize that it may not be something that you need. However, it might be something that your neighbor needs. So it's really important to think about that, I think, on a community level.